Okay, so as I was saying, we do have a short review of graphing. Uh, we'll be going on that right now. Uh, remember, this is in your appendix. It's in the, the back part of your book. So, when we talk about graphing, what we really are talking about is something called the rectangular coordinate system. You guys have heard of this as like the x, y axis. <coughs> so if you keep track, C.3, a short review of graphing. And more specifically, we'll be reviewing the rectangular coordinate system. Now, I just mentioned that this has another name, too. This is also called like the x-y axis. You guys have heard of that before, right? where we have the x and y axis, they're crossing, they make up this, this plane, what we call a, a two-dimensional plane. It's also called the Cartesian plane. Have you ever heard of the Cartesian plane before? Well, it's called the Cartesian plane because this guy named Rene Descartes, you know Rene Descartes? He was a philosopher, mathematician, kind of like an all-in-all -all guy. Um, he is, a, is the one that kind of, well, he's credited with first discovering the, the Cartesian plane of the rectangular coordinate system. And do you guys want to hear the story of how he did it? It's kind of funny. This is the story of how he did it. So this guy was kind of a sickly dude, and he would stay in bed till like 12 o'clock. Then he would get up, take about a three-hour bath, do a little bit of math, talk to some royalty, teach them like a tutor, and then go to sleep. So he was, he was always in bed, and, or always like sitting in the bathtub. This is back in like the, I think it's 1600s or something. So they didn't have like TV or whatnot. Otherwise, he just would have been watching TV all the time. So this guy was sitting in his bathtub, looking at the corner of the wall, as you always do when you're in the bathtub for like four hours, right? You just kind of look at the wall. And so he's watching the ceiling, and he's noticing this fly, like crawling on the, on the ceiling. And he has this idea. He goes, oh, you know what? I can mark where that fly is by counting a certain number of inches over on this wall and a certain number of inches over on this wall and can mark exactly where it's going. And that's the idea behind our x-y axis. Isn't that kind of crazy? At least that's a story. That's how it's supposed to come about. Not sure if I believe it completely, but that's, that's a plan. Anyway, we know it as this thing. That's a rectangular coordinate system. And each of these has, all these parts have a name. Uh, specifically, what do we call this horizontal axis right here? Which one is this? That's right, this is our x-axis, where all of our x-coordinates are, are valued on. How about the vertical one, what do we call that? Uh -huh. Now, of course, these axes, what we call intersect. They intersect at exactly one point that goes right here, the point which is on both the x and y-axis. What's that called? Very good. And the coordinate would be 0, 0. We're going to plot points in a, in a second. We know that we have to have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. This specific one is the origin. Now, of course, when we look at the x-y-axis, or the rectangular coordinate plane, we see four quadrants. Do you remember what the names of these quadrants are? Well, the 1, 2, 3, and 4. Do you know which one is quadrant 1? Is this quadrant 1, this one, this one? Which one? This one? This one? No, the first one. The origin. Yeah, that one. Or it says origin. Yeah, very good. That's exactly right. So this is quadrant one. Now, does it go counterclockwise or clockwise for quadrant two? Good. So this is two, three, and four. Also, we know that these things are assigned, these, uh, this x-axis and y-axis, we assign values to them. And really what we have here is a crossing of two number lines that go in both directions. That's really what they are. It's a number line going this way uh, horizontally and this way vertically. The question I have for you is which way is which? Do we go positive to the right or positive to the left? To the right. Of course, because it really is a number line just like any other number line you've ever seen. So here we do like the one two, three. On the left hand side we, we go negative. That's why our center, our origin is zero, zero. How about the vertical axis? Are we going positive up or positive down? Positive. Sure.
And now that we've assigned values to both the x and y axis, we can go ahead and plot some points. So right now what I'd like you to do is draw a different x, y axis on your paper right now. We're going to practice plotting some points. I'll show you how to do a couple in case you've just totally forgotten how to do this stuff. Then I'll just ask you to do it and we'll go on from there. Okay, when we plot points in here, we're going to plot the, usually points are, are given by capital letter. So we plot the value, we put a little dot, and then we put the capital letter that signifies our point. So let's try a couple ones that are they're not so bad. Let's try 3, 5. Now, when I say 3, 5 like this, that signifies a point. But you have to know what's the x value and what's the y value. In this situation, what is our x coordinate or our x value in this case? Good. So it's basically alphabetical order. It goes x comma y. So alphabetical order x y. Our first one's three five. What's that tell you to do? Over three from where? Origin. So we start always at the center, our origin, and we go over to the. You said right. Yes. One, two, three, and then where? Five, five. Okay, so we're not putting a point here. We're going over three in combination to <coughs> up five because our y coordinate is five. We put that, and if I say this is point A, then we're going to put a point A just like that. How about we try point B, negative two, comma negative four. What's negative 2 comma negative 4 tell us to do? Left. left how many? Two. And then, that's of course, is that from point A or from our origin? origin? So we're always going back to the center when we're plotting points. Now, listen carefully, when we're, when we're graphing lines, if you're dealing with a linear equation, we are going to be going from sometimes our y-intercept, which we'll talk about that a lot later, and counting up and over using our slope. And that's, that's a little bit different. Right now, if you're just plotting points, we're always starting at the origin. So we're going left two, and then where? Yeah, down four. Good. We'll put that B, and we're good to go. Let's try a few more. Let's do, I'm going to have you do these on your own. Why don't you try one, negative three. Negative three, comma four. We'll do 0, 4, and we'll do 5, 0. <coughs> so take some time and plot those on your own. And we'll talk about what quadrant these things are in as well. So point C. Point C says I'm going over to the right one because that's positive, and then I'm going to go down three units because that's negative three. So our point C should be over one, down three. Should be right there. Did you get point C correct? Give me a little head nod if you did. Good. All right. Next one is negative three, four. So from the origin again, we're going negative three. It's always our x first <coughs> because that's the first number we're doing. Is our x coordinate one, two, three to the left, and then four up. That plus is about right there. I'm going to label that D. Next one, 0, 4. If you ever have that 0 that says, well, if you start at the origin, that's the point 0, 0, you don't have to go over at all, or you don't have to go up at all if it's, on, if it's the y coordinate. So 0, 4 says, I'm starting the origin, I go over 0, and then I go up 4. Did you all get that one right? right? Last one, 5, 0. This says you are going positive 5 on the x-axis, but then you're not going to go up or down at all. That's going to be our point. How many will have all of these points correct? Good, very good. Can you name the quadrants? What's the quadrant for C? Good. How about for A? How about for B? How about E? Actually, it doesn't have a quadrant. The axes are not in quadrants. And so, the trick question, ha ha ha, gotcha. 
No, I'm just kidding. I'm not trying to get you in this class. Um, but no, it's not in the quadrant. You'd say that would be like on the y-axis. And of course, f would be on the x-axis. If it's here in the center, you can say x-axis and y-axis, or you can say the origin. Any one of those will work. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Last one I want to ask you is, all these points had whole number coordinates. Is it possible to graph something like 2.5, 1.5? Is that okay? Sure, that just says you're not going to be on a, a hash mark. If this is G. We we would go over two and a half, about right in the middle of that, then up one and a half, and we could put points like that as well. So just so you know, you don't have to have whole numbers to graph. You can have fractions or decimals, anything you like. Would you raise your hand if you're okay on quadrants and potting points? Good deal. Let's see if we can graph some of these things. Also, we're going to talk about something called I know you've heard of it before. Linear equations. You, you've heard of linear equations? What's the linear part of that mean? Line. Yeah, that's the key word. Linear is, it means line. So line equations. Things that make lines. And in math, when we say a line, we don't mean, oh, a line. It, it means a straight line. That's what we imply. So when we draw lines in here, they're, they're straight lines. So when we're talking about linear equations, we're talking about equations that on a graph will create a straight line. Horizontal, angled, up or down. Even vertical in some cases. So linear equations, we're talking about line equations. Now you are going to get some linear equations in different forms. This form, when you have something like 7x minus 2y equals 4, This form right here, where you have that both variables, notice how we're having two variables here, by the way. We have an x variable and a y. Why do you suppose we have an x variable and a y variable? We have two axes, right? We better have two variables unless we have a vertical or a horizontal line. If we want to change across both axes, we need both variables. Uh, so that's, that's what this signifies. Do you remember what it's called when you have both your variables to one side and your constant to the other side? It's the standard form. Mm -hmm. If you've never been taught how to use standard form appropriately, you're going to learn that in this, in this class. Because this, this form, even though it looks kind of like, why would you want that? Why don't we do slope intercept, which is the next thing I'm going to show you. Because this can help you out. This can make graphing very quick in certain cases. I'll show you that later on when we get to graphing linear inequalities. <clears throat> So we've got, of course, two variables. We talked about y just a second ago. We have two axes. We're going to need two variables to make sure we can coordinate with both of them. The graph is a straight line. For us, that's kind of a redundancy there, but I want to make sure you know it, it's not a curve at all. It's a straight line. And standard form, our standard form for us, is ax plus by equals c. However, there is another form that we often like to use, and that's called our slope-intercept form, this one. Hey, by the way, by the way, can you go from one form to the other? 